Hello, and welcome back to another episode on The Nicole Vignola Show. It's me, Nick, your pocket neuroscientist. Today, we're gonna be talking about task bracketing. Single-handedly, one of the most important tools about understanding how to create habits and how to maintain them so that they become automatic. There are particular habits and behaviors that you do where you don't think about it. For example, when I'm driving my car, I don't think about me shifting gears, I just do that automatically. If you are in the States, you probably have an automatic. I have a 25-year-old Land Cruiser, so I still drive a stick. Now, in the beginning, I would have had to manually think about every single time I wanted to change gears and understand where I was in space whilst on the road, but now it's just something that happens automatic. We call it automaticity. And with task bracketing, over time, it means that you begin to engage very deep parts of the brain, predominantly called the basal ganglia, where you no longer need the prefrontal cortex to make decisions about enacting a particular habit. So when you are initially trying to create a new habit, there's quite a lot of executive control happening where you need to make the decision to partake in this particular movement or a particular behavior or particular activity to get you to the point where you are now doing this thing as a habit. So task bracketing within the theory of habit formation is the concept of bookmarking exactly the beginning and the end of a particular sequence of events which then fall within the same bracket of activities. So a simple example is something like an evening routine. If I personally want to get better at going to bed at a more reasonable time and I want to maintain that habit, it would be in my best interest to task bracket that exact behavior until it eventually becomes automatic. So what happens is at nine o'clock, I will put my phone on airplane mode, come hello high order, unless something really, really exciting is going on. But even then, I do try my best to just put it on airplane mode at nine o'clock. And that initiates the beginning of the bracket. Within that bracket, then I do different things. So I will start winding down. I will put the dogs to bed. I will do an evening stretch meditation. I will then change into my pajamas or I normally have a shower at night. Um, I will then brush my teeth and then I will get into bed and I personally read. And what's really interesting is that it's gotten to the point where if I don't read, I actually can't sleep. And that is because I've ingrained these particular sequence of events so closely together for such a long period of time. If the last behavior isn't the one that I'm used to, it's like my brain hasn't quite comprehended that the task bracket is now complete. And so for me, my task bracket starts at 9 p.m. when I turn my phone on airplane mode and the task bracket ends when I finish the page or whatever, when I finish reading. I then close the book and that's when I go to bed. So within that bracket, things can change. They don't have to be exact every single time, but the beginning and end are very important to the brain. So let's get into the neuroscience of what is going on there and why it becomes such an associative pattern that your brain requires to then complete a particular behavior, like for me, going to bed at a reasonable time around 10 o'clock. Now, Deep within the brain, there's an area called the basal ganglia. Now the basal ganglia has loads and loads and loads of dopaminergic neurons. So the basal ganglia resides deep within the brain. It's essentially a collection of nuclei that are responsible for learning, for habit formation, habit initiation, and even movement initiation. The basal ganglia is essentially heavily involved in creating those automatic patterns of behavior that you enact without thinking. So within the basal ganglia, you've got also dopaminergic neurons which are releasing dopamine and they are also responsible for then reinforcing particular habits and behaviors when they are pertaining to positive reward outcomes. So it's got to do with reward prediction error. So if your brain predicts that something is going to bring you pleasure and joy later down the line or in the immediate moment, it will release dopamine to then reinforce that pattern of behavior. And so within the basal ganglia, there's this sort of self-reinforcing pattern that then re rewards the behaviors that it has initiated and then it becomes a sort of automatic process over time so that you don't have to consciously make decisions about whether you're going to go for that run. So you know how you've got that friend who just runs and enjoys it? It's because they've done it so many times that the inertia that comes with a particular habit has been removed. So inertia is a kind of like resistance to wanting to 
enact in something. You do it enough times, your brain and body just understand that that is something that you do and you overcome that inertia that is required for the particular behavior, movement, activity, etc. Whilst you're not a runner and your friend is, it would be hard for you to fathom how they could be someone that enjoys it, but you can see how the brain structures within the brain, you know, many parts of it, but including this basal ganglia, have now changed to appreciate the behavior as something that just becomes automatic. And that's the important part here is that automaticity of behaviors is really important because from the outside looking in, sometimes it can feel really difficult to think of yourself as somebody who enjoys doing a particular thing, but the wiring of the brain changes in a way that actually changes your perception of things. And that's a whole topic of discussion for another day is the perception of how you see the world. I did a whole video on this with perception box. So back to that task bracketing, when you task bracket something, you end up forming this natural environment that cues you to then enact a particular behavior. And so you start relying on environmental cues, maybe time dependent cues, because your brain associates particular things with the task bracket in which you have set it in. So task bracketing doesn't necessarily only have to be within a routine, a morning routine or an afternoon routine. The task bracket can be a lot smaller. So for example, maybe you work from home and you want to work out from home as well. So moving yourself to a different room, that could be the beginning of your task bracket where you then enact the behavior of working out in that room. So by bracketing in the same room and expecting your brain and body to always work out in that same place, at the same time, you are now creating a very clear set of rules as to when the behavior begins and ends. And so perhaps you pick a time and you pick a location and that is your task bracket already. And so putting yourself in the room at a specific time is the beginning of your task bracket and then you put on a timer for 40 minutes and that's the end of your task bracket. You've now created a very clear set of rules as to when your brain and body need to enact in the behavior of exercising during your lunch break. And again, it's the reason why people do things like clockwork because it's this task bracketing system in the brain that delineates beginning and end as to when I enact a particular behavior. Over time, there will be less of a decision-making process where I already alluded to the fact that the prefrontal cortex is now no longer active and having to make the decision about working out. It's like you're in your lunch break, you see the time, 12 o'clock, ah, there we go, time for me to work out. You get up, you put on the same shoes, you go into the same room, you do your workout, 40 minute timer goes off, bam, that's you done. So now let's talk about dopamine. Dopamine is responsible for reward prediction error. So what that means is that it is responsible for predicting whether something is going to have a positive outcome. And so if there is a behavior that leads to a positive outcome, dopamine is released to then reinforce that behavior. And by task bracketing, by putting it within a specific time frame or a specific location or within a routine, or we can get more nuanced with the examples. Maybe you want to read more. So you do it between coffee and breakfast. That's another way of task bracketing when it is that you read, you are setting clear boundaries of when you want to do something and when you should end it. It is easier for your brain to comprehend. You're also creating a very predictable cycle that then releases dopamine in anticipation of the reward. And the more clear you get with your task bracketing, the more dopamine you will release in anticipation of reward because your brain will know that there's something good coming at the end of that. Now, the other thing about dopamine is that it is really good at predicting cue-driven behaviors. So what that means is that your brain works by association. So a classic example is when you are with a particular friend that maybe smokes and you don't normally smoke, but when you're with them, your brain's like, mm, I could fancy a cigarette. And so let's look at it from a positive perspective. If you put on your running shoes, your brain goes, oh, time to run. It's the reason why I don't wear my running shoes for anything else but running because I'm trying to adopt a very consistent running habit like clockwork. 
And so I don't wear my running shoes when I'm doing something else. I only wear my running shoes when I'm running because I want my brain to associate that when I put on these shoes, it's time for us to have a really good time because despite what I tell myself, I actually really enjoy running. And so that's also a clear task bracket is that the beginning of me putting on my shoes is going to initiate the cue, the reward, the movement, the behavior of me then going outside, going for a run. The end of that it would be the same thing every time, which is probably closing my running app and sitting down and just taking a breather. So I hope that you found that helpful. You can always drop it in the comments if you have any ideas or you need any help on how to task bracket a behavior that you're trying to adopt. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, I'm answering questions twice a month as a Q&A. So drop your questions in the comment section and I will be there to answer them. It's me, Nick, your pocket neuroscientist.